Hi everybody, here's Christian from Teamwork Cast. Hi, this is Matthias Jack from Poland. And this is Netrunner Teamwork Cast. These are the very, very exciting Polish Nationals top 16 on the 29th to, 10, to 30th of August. This is the 30th of August. This is the second day and this is the top 16 playoffs. This is the second round for the top 16. And we have you, Matuszczak, on the right. Yeah, that's me. And on the left, we have Mark from Germany. Yes, he came all, all, all over. Uh, he came all, uh, you know, all this way from Germany, from Berlin, actually. There were two cars from Germany. One was the car uh, where the cool guys were hanging out, like me, <laughs> and the other car was uh, where the pros were hanging out, like Mark. So he's one of the two Germans that made it to the, to the top 16, and he will be facing you. Yes, we were supposed to be facing in the first round uh, of the top cut, but there was a little switch in the standings. So yeah. we ended up playing each other in the second round after all. Ah, so finally you meet up. Yes, and it was the winner's bracket, so this was really nice. Yeah, this is the cool winner's bracket. Uh, so Mark will be playing uh, the NEH there, so he will be drawing a card uh, the first time he installs the server each turn. And you are playing the Andromeda. Yep. And Old school. I, yep, I've been playing Andromeda a lot this season and, well, I've had my considerations whether I should play it after Marcus' body and all that, but I decided to stick to what I'm comfortable with. Mm. And I'm really debating whether I should keep this hand, but I decided oh, not to. Oh, you're not to. keeping it. No. I mean, that's, that's probably a good idea. If there's really not really good cards on your hand, you really want to have... Uh, because the starting hand is so important with Andromeda, right? Yes, exactly. But, but you get nine cards, so you can be pretty greedy with it. Yes. I'm I'm fishing for Desperata security testing usually. So you have three of those in a deck. I, I saw yeah, three yeah, security yeah. testing. That's the main economy engine. So so I really need to see it early. Mm. And well, we'll see if I will. All right. The, so Mark is eager to begin. He early begins. He has a nice watch here on his hand, and starts with an install in a remote server. And a second mm. one. And. Oh man, will there be an ice? There has to be an ice on HQ, right? Oh no, uh, ice on no. HQ! Wow! Okay. So this is gonna start right off the bat and it's gonna be pretty aggressive, I guess. So let's see what I can do. It's a sure gamble, always a must nice start. So I this is amazing. Yeah? I have an inside job for this yeah. server, so I'm guessing I'm gonna play it. I don't remember anymore. This is pretty amazing. I mean, Mark is going balls out here. You could just easily account siphon him to death. Yeah, right. I'm guessing I don't have that. Oh, oh nice! Ah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a relief to see that. Sniping the Astro script with the inside job, really nice. Mark was was playing, you know, playing a risky game here, hoping that you don't have it. Oh man! And then, <laughs> oh, oh, drive biving that card, and that turns out to be the bad campaign. Okay. And you have to discard another inside job. That went perfectly, but mm. actually it was a little misplay because if I. If he installed the card the better way around, this would yeah. have been terrible because I would have, well, just seen the Astro and would be able to do nothing about it and I would have yeah. wasted an inside job on a path campaign. This yeah, probably been... you, sh you should have, like, Astro scripts uh, uh, the drive by the first card. And also he could have, like, stopped you with a guard, but nobody plays that. Yeah, nobody plays that. <laughs> All right, so installing in front of HQ and R&D uh, some ice, and then you are uh, with the second turn. You're getting out the oh man, half of the or two thirds of the rig already out with a switchblade and a corroda. Yep, we'll try to get some accesses here probably. Uh, meanwhile, Mark gets up a pet campaign and plays the sweep sweeps. Oh man, if only that came out on the first turn, that would have been great. Yeah, that would be grim for me. It's a mm. little bit late, but it's still fine. He has a lot more money. And I'm really struggling economically. I have two credits and I have no economy whatsoever. Yeah, troublesome, troublesome. He just keeps drawing cards, installs a card in that server. Uh, and uh, yeah, it gives you the turn and you're like struggling with this one. You have a silence on hand, but uh, that's not your priority right now. You want to get some kind of uh, credits. You draw cards. One of them is a ghost runner. And finally, there is a secure testing, which you drop immediately. This is good to see. That's gonna give me two credits a turn. That's not too good. I really want to see a desperado here, but that will have to do for now. I have a ghost runner, so I can face trick stuff and not be afraid of architect. This is big. That's really good, uh, but of course, uh, Mark is um, is now can now shut off your economy engine if he gets up enough ice in front of his open servers. Right now, there is archives and pet campaign open, 
so let's see what happens now. Oh, he replaces an ice on R and D. Apparently, it was vulnerable to whatever is out. We have to assume it was maybe an architect or something. Maybe, or maybe a wraparound. I don't know. No, that's also possible. Yeah, hard to tell actually. I was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm surprised with that play. He discards some more stuff. This could be agendas. Mm -hmm. We saw in his hand earlier that he had well quite a few of them. I don't think he has as many. I think I saw a biotic in hand in there, and I remember it was a fast advance from the tournament. So mm. there's no mid-season threat, I'm guessing. So you're guessing, you already know at this point that this is no mid-season stack. Yep. Alright, so you're getting credits, and I guess you run also on the, on the, on the server there to get two additional credits. Yeah, and um, I'm gonna be doing that pretty much every turn, I'm guessing. Yeah. And this might not be very well visible on video. Yeah, yeah, but we're gonna add those delicious, beautiful visualizations for our listeners so they know exactly what is going on. Exactly. Uh, uh, so we have another ghost runner here, and then Mark creates a new server, uh, protected by an ice, gets another credit, and it's your turn to do something about this. Yeah. He gave up on shutting down my security testing, and this is probably a good call because uh, he would have to stop playing assets, and he's in any age, so he doesn't want to. Yeah, and also like uh, that will require a lot of ice, and you will get in anyway with eventually. So you actually will benefit from the land, uh, late game play because you would dominate the late game uh, with uh, your uh, recurring credits. Oh, definitely. Pretty much. Ooh. Ooh, run this. on that server, and that is a toll booth. And that hurts. That hurts a lot. It also hurts if you if you are don't have any money because then you have to spend the ghost runner credits. Oof. Yeah, I managed to play a short gamble beforehand, so it's not that bad. But still, still I mean, it could be better. Yeah, I don't have my refractor, so I lost the free. I'm not getting any access. He spent a lot of a lot of money though, so that's a price size. But apparently, there is no scoring involved. Maybe there is a sense behind it. I would assume. Yeah, looks that way. But this is gonna cost me a lot of money to get in. Five mm. for Sansan, well, free and some self credits for the access. That's not money I have, so. Definitely. So Mark uh, uh, tr uh, thinks about installing something in front of archives, uh, decides other, uh, otherwise and installs another ice from the scoring server. Really wants to make this a really painful server to get into. Yeah, uh, he's also playing around uh, an inside job perhaps. Uh, well, I don't have them anymore. I just have two in my deck, and mm. both went there. Oh, well, I got rid of both of them first turn. Running on R&D, there is an Eli. That is, of course, uh, also painful. Uh, but I guess you get through somehow, uh, and you will see two cards because you it's, dropped an R&D interface right there. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be good for me because I only have one R&D interface in my deck, and it's gonna let me have some nice accesses here. Mm. This is gonna be big because, uh, well, I'm nowhere near to set up. Uh, my table looks pretty grim, I must say. Yeah, so, there's uh, not enough money going on. You need a lot of more money here. You know, I'm basically just hoping to access stuff, access stuff at this point, but I saw mm. nothing. There's Bre a lot of agendas on hand, we see. Yeah, I think I can see a breaking news and a deal. Mm. Those are not the agendas he wants to score, but... So no wonder he keeps them around. He probably waits for some kind of sense and play to get those guys out. Yep, and it's, well... He's getting money, he's getting set up for that, for sure. And then a special order, and I, I'm assuming you will get the missing decoder. Yep, that's what I'm gonna do. And that is but the refractor, a beautiful little breaker. I love the uh, refractor so much. It's so good and it only costs one, it's mm, That's really the best crazy. thing about it, it's just so cheap to get out. Oh. Yep, and only one stealth credit to boost, to boost it, so you don't really need a huge stealth setup to use it. Which yeah, in a lot of uh, t situations, like against an Enigma or something, you don't even need stealth credits. Exactly. Uh, we'll also do some good things with this toll booth. I mean, it will still cost three credits to encounter the toll booth, but mm -hmm. then you can break it with a stealth credit and a normal credit. So four credits to get to the toll booth is pretty sweet. That's like nothing. This yeah. Is, well, there are no breakers except Yogg can do it cheaper, and Yogg actually can do it these days. So. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, oh, Alright, so a now there's a siphon as expected. Uh, let's see what Mark has pre in store for you because he has to expect this this kind of play. That is going to be the architect uh, not d d doing a lot to stop you. You will have to use some of your ghost runner credits, uh, but then he loses the rest of his credits. Oh, he res Sansan. Oh, nice. Nice. That was his, his uh, counterplay. That's a really nice play. Really good playing around siphon here. 
Yes, very important. Very important to cause keep in mind, you know, what is your, your account siphon strategy? And then you what you get the access and you get the card from uh, HQ. Well, I have to have to, have to be happy about this one. I mean, yes. I managed to burn his credits. I but I'm still broke. I'm at two credits. I'm well, nowhere near near being able to trash that Samson, which really sucks. No. Nope. Now I can't even drive by it because it's red. Yeah, that's really a problem right now. And inside the server, it will be very expensive to get into. I mean, Tobos <laughs> is broken for four credits. Whatever. But uh, yeah, uh, and of course then he can score out the build. That was, I guess, his strategy all along. He scores out with a shipper from Sansen, so he doesn't even need money for this. Yeah, he didn't have a, he didn't have money for this, but mm. that's good. He got it out of his hand in case I wanted to run HQ to check it for agendas. So, so mm. I'm guessing what I'm gonna go for here is just R and D accesses. We'll see because well. Yeah, is it archived or no? It's R and D. R and D. Yeah, you got the money from uh, from security testing on archives, and then you run R and D with C two cards, establishing kind of like a, um, uh, I would say like an R and D lock here. Yeah, something like that. I wouldn't say that criminals are you know the go to faction for R and D lock, but nope, that's definitely as not. As it gets. <laughs> As good as it gets indeed. All right, but meanwhile, you're not drawing any cards if you keep clicking through at Eli. So you re really need to find some solution to get more cards in here. I'm listing still the Desperado on your side. Yeah, I, I don't have it by now, and it really sucks. It puts me behind, I don't know, probably 10, 15 credits at this point. Mm. So, well, I'm basically not going for my standard game plan of controlling the game. I'm basically hoping to get access to the agendas. I'm yes, very hard now, now. All right, John Masanori will help you with a card draw. Man, that's such a good card in this deck. Oh, you had like three, three of those or two? I had two. I mean, mm. I had two at this tournament. But, uh, well, I'd probably play three now because yeah. I used to play three, three before and I missed the third one. It yeah, would have really helped here if I got it earlier. Such a great way, especially with those recurring credits, because you can even run through ice and it still costs you nothing and you still get money out of it and you get even card draw. You just burn through your deck as, as long as this guy is out. Now we see a fast track, I think, and uh, Mark will get the us, uh, not the Astro, uh, yes, the Astro script pro uh, pilot program and will score this out together with the Biotic Labor. All right, so he goes for the safe play, he doesn't keep it in hand. Mm. He, he Invest a lot of resources in this, but yes. well, I still have no way to get into the sand sign. I mean, well, that Astro token is so important because now he can get like uh, another um, fast track uh, as long as the sand sign is out, and then score the, se the second Astro, uh, which will put him in like, a very good position to win this game. You are falling behind Matushak. Oh, terribly, terribly. This is looking pretty grim right now. If he has another fast track, he can chain another astro yes basically if he sees an agenda i don't think he has an agenda in hand but anything he sees he can score and he's already at four points yeah we can assume he doesn't have an agenda because he actually used the fast track here i would say if he had an agenda then he would just score it yeah definitely definitely would be a big misplay to play otherwise and he played really solid so mm. no reason to no reason to believe that the two um, pet campaigns also doing some good do good job for him. He uh, he doesn't really need a lot of money to keep going, and uh, right now he is all set up and ready to go. And another account siphon would maybe help for you. Oh no, he doesn't have any money. Ah. All right. Yeah, I have no way to bounce back in terms of money, and he won't yeah. need money till the end of the game, unless he wants to further protect his R and D. I got a right. data sucker though, which is That's nice. Great. So this is the, this is the the one weird card in your stealth that like you have one data sucker. Yeah, uh, it's my new invention. Your your invention. <laughs> I invented the data sucker. Yeah, it's a that, good card. Who would have thought? Me guys, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that was all me. Uh, but it's like a one influence version of cloak that doesn't suck that bad. That's my reasoning behind it. Mm. It's pretty decent. I go yeah, there. Yeah. I go there, trash the Sansan, and I go completely broke. But I think I, I felt that I had to, just so he can't trash anything. He uh, can't score anything. He top decks here. But going back to the data sucker, I think it's like a really nice addition, in addition to a cloak, because the cloak credits, you know, they okay, they maybe do uh, get you like, especially with uh, like switchblade, get you in. Uh, 
in uh, give you more strength, so to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, but the cool thing about data suckers is that you can collect those data sucker tokens, so you can um, amass them, you know, in, in great quantities with all those uh, cheap runs that you get from the self builds, and then use them when they really count. So like huge servers with a lot of sentries don't keep you out as much anymore. Exactly. Especially since sentries are so um, so low strength. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Usually. And the, the huge part about data suckers is that it only costs one influence. And mm. all the cool cards for stealth envy, be it the breakers or the RDIs or the cloaks or anything, cost two influence. So you're basically always spending 14. Mm. And then you're left with this one awkward influence. I used to play quality times, Tim Hack in this slot. But I think data sucker is the best. Because mm. it lets you spend to influence, you know, uh, not for a cloak. That's a that's a good point. Like to say, like uh, because you, a cloak would cost two influence, you just spend one influence on a data sucker. So it's actually. <laughs> Uh, gives you a similar thing that Cloak does, but at, at lower influence. Exactly. All right, so you did trash the Sansen, and now you are, I guess, running on Archives normally, or...? Yeah, I wanted to bait out the Jackson, because mm. I, didn't want to, I didn't want to let him draw a lot of cards, yes. because I can't really get into his hand multiple times. I don't have my HQ interface, so... Well, I can't allow him to draw cards too fast because he'll just fish out those Astros and, well, finish me. Yes, he does have a card installed in that scoring server of his behind his toll booth. So this is yet another threat. We have to assume this is not an agenda because he still hasn't scored this. I think it's a Sansan he can't afford. All right, so you get into the uh, R&D now with using the data sucker here, interestingly. And the data sucker, again, doing some really good things because something like Eli's can be sometimes used with a data sucker token, like you just did right now. So you just uh, pay two credits through Eli. I'm not sure if I if it was me using the data sucker tokens or was it uh, me losing them to cyber decks. Oh, because there was a cyber decks you hit a There was a cyber decks, but I'm not sure if it was like, if it No, you really. used it before. You just paid two credits okay. to get in there. All right, and then he scores another BL. That was installed right there. No, no he, used the, he used the Astro script here. Yeah, this is. So he is at six points. This is looking grim to, for you, Matusha. This is looking terrible. I mean, I'm at one credit, three points. He's at six. Well, the good part is he doesn't have money or he doesn't have the Astro counter anymore. All right. But so. He, he just needs one breaking news, though. There, we have to assume there's one breaking news in the deck still. Definitely. And there probably are some fast tracks, so if he wants to fast advance it of that sand sand that I can't trash, so mm. that would be another problem. He doesn't uh -oh. have an agenda though, he, he doesn't have access to an agenda yet. Alright, so there, there's a lot of thinking going on on Matushak's side. Yeah, like, how do I get out of this? <laughs> <laughs> All right, second hit, you actually, a second click, you actually ran, ran his hand, spending uh, the uh, Ghost Runner credits uh, to see another toll booth, probably not going to be rest in this game anymore, not at this point. No, nope, that's not happening, probably. But yeah, that gave me nothing, except a Data Sucker token, but I actually have enough self credit to do that. Yeah. But All I'm gonna right. go back to running. I gotta go back to running on D because that's where the agendas are, and yeah. I have to I mean, see them before him. I mean, you had to give it a poker uh, just in case there is something there. Yeah, that was probably my idea. I'm also, not you, sure, you had sure another. <laughs> Yeah, you had another Ghost Runner on hand, so that was your plan all along. I, have, I can <laughs> waste some Ghost Runner credits because I have another Ghost Runner here. Yeah, and but I think, I think, like, watching it now, from the way this game goes, I should be able to tell that he doesn't have an agenda in hand. Mm. Maybe, you know, a fourth oh. Astro. This is an Astro. This is oh, nice. Oh, nice. All Running right. on R&D and snagging the Astro, and now the game is wide open again, uh, because the next agenda wins the game for either of you guys. I guess you could uh, snag another uh, breaking news, then you would still need two agendas. Well, basically, you know, R&D is only two clicks away from me. It's been that all game long, and I used it many times. Now yeah. he further ices R&D. So, well, yeah, with my astonishing zero credits, it's gonna be <laughs> difficult to break in. I have a soccer token and four on Ghost Runner, though, so it's not that bad. Yeah, and you get, I mean, still get the access. I'm, I'm still amazed that he didn't close off uh, archives, even though he sees that you get so cheap um, central server access for the data sucker. Yeah, this could, this could, yeah, this could help maybe here. 
You, so you didn't trash a cyberdeck suite, huh? Uh, no, I did not. I believe it's in his hand now. Yeah, because because then you wouldn't uh, be able to get the data sucker tokens. Yeah. Yeah, uh, there is a, certainly a data sucker uh, cyberdeck virus suite on his hand. Mm -hmm. And this, there's there are enters in his hand as well, which is interesting. We don't hmm. see it in any age too often. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, All right, we're running on the R&D, and that is going to be the second Eli. This is going to be very, very expensive to get in there, even though you will see two um, uh, two cards. Uh, so, oh, oh wow. Oh, was. man. Breaking first <laughs> Eli with the credits, and the data sucker the second Eli with t double clicks, and you get this the winning agenda here. Amazing. This was super close. And out of nowhere, Jesus Christ, he even had like a, a, spe a special order on hand, right? Uh, yeah. Fast track, I mean. Yeah, I, uh, we talked about the game and he told me that he had the game winning play, I think, via fast track sense and breaking news. Yeah. So this was basically my last turn. So oh, man. I got a lucky access here, but... Oof, oof, this was, <laughs> oh man. By the skin of your teeth, or how do you say it? By, by the skin of your neck? Anyway, super, super... <laughs> Uh, close game here. Yeah, exactly. I'm really glad I managed to pull this one off. But really well played by Mark. I think I'm complaining yeah. about my lack of desperado here. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of lack of, of a lot of things on your side. Uh, with so so little money, this this could have easily went so differently. You could have just easily whiffed on this last access here. Oh, definitely. Um, so generally, uh, moving on, what how, how how what is your general impression of this tournament for you? It was really an amazing tournament. We had two good, two good, two days of really close games, and well, there were some surprising results on the last day. Some really interesting decks that I hope you guys are gonna see on the channel. Oh, yeah. And uh, well, I was really happy. I managed to do pretty well the tournament. No spoilers yet, but uh, some pretty amazing games that I remember for long. Oh, definitely, definitely. So there's more games coming up, more exciting games coming up. There's more where this, all this came from. So I hope you will join us next time. And thank you for joining me for this uh, for this video, Matoshek. It was a great Thanks pleasure. Thanks for having me. It was a pleasure. All right, sweet. So we're going to move on. I hope you will join us next time. And as always, HACK THE PLANET! HACK THE PLANET! Shut up and yeah. get in the car. Shit on me. This episode of Netrunner Timor Cast was created with a generous support from our listeners. If you enjoy the show and you can't get enough Netrunner videos, please check out our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash hacktheplanet.